नमस्कार हेलो हेलो फ्रेंड्स हेलो स्टूडेंट्स हेलो व्यूअर्स वी आर यू आर वाचिंग अस ऑन ई विद्या चैनल नंबर टेन एंड वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन एन लाइव इंटरेक्टिव सेशन ऑफ टूडेज एंड वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न एन इंग्लिश चैप्टर सब्जेक्ट इज इंग्लिश फॉर टूडे एंड द टॉपिक इज पोएम अमांडा लेट्स रीड द पोएम एंड अमांडा विद अवर टूडेज गेस्ट मिस दीप्ति चावला यू आर अ मेंटो टीचर ऑफ इंग्लिश सब्जेक्ट आर Yamuna Vihar Delhi a warm welcome to you in the show ma'am thank you so much rishan ji uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, today we would be discussing uh, the poem amanda from grade 10th first flight textbook and uh, let's directly jump into the poem i'm i'm sure all the children would be excited uh, to learn about this poem because this is one poem that relates to their life so uh, the poem amanda is by robin klein yes ma'am okay Uh, you are all watching us on uh, channel number 10 and you are also watching on our youtube channel and uh, you can call us for any feedback any questions on 8800440559 my name is rajan rajput and you can also mail us on uh, dth.class10 at the rate ciet.nic.in so now time to learn the chapter amanda with uh, deepthi ma'am thank you srijan ji uh, so let's jump into the poem straight away and the poem amanda is by the poet robin klein let's get to know the poet a little bit uh, robin klein is a celebrated australian author and poet who writes for children she is a very famous uh, writer for children's literature she has won many awards in her lifetime she has worked uh, in various uh ways and she uses her life experiences in prose as well as poetry now before we go to the poem directly there are a few things i would like all of you to answer me so children why do you think poems are important uh can srijan ji you comment on why poems are important yeah sure uh, actually the poem is uh, very interesting when uh, we are uh, learn it uh, by saying uh, in a in a poem way in a style like uh, la 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 do 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 okay so basically <laughs> you are theme. talking of rhyme right yes. so we enjoy reading poems we enjoy listening poems uh, also poems help us to enhance our language skills by adding to our vocabulary they also help us to connect with ourselves with the world around us and also with other texts they also stimulate our creativity and they also help us to reflect on our emotions so poems are a great way to uh, help us connect with our own selves as well as others and before we move forward uh, i would also like you to look at these pictures children and uh, there are four pictures on the screen yes now there ma- there are a couple of things which your parents expect you to do and there are a couple of things that your parents do not like when you do it often right yeah. can you guess what are those things that your parent ask you to avoid uh, that is uh, eating chocolate and uh, talking on phone absolutely right you are so our parents always uh, tell us not to talk on phone too often and uh, they expect us not to eat too many sweets or chocolates right yes uh, in the other two pictures what do you see in the other two pictures uh, we are uh, uh, like seeing key cleaning and right. uh, and reading but we don't like this uh, if we are <laughs> in student life so but our parents also ensure that we are disciplined we keep our rooms and our house clean we yes. also study on time So this poem is also about a girl whose parents tell her to do certain things and ask her to avoid a few things. I am sure that all of you children all of you will be re- able to relate to this poem very well. So let's read the poem first. Okay? I'm just reading it aloud. Don't bite your nails Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders Amanda. Stop that slouching and sit up straight Amanda. There is a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is me a mermaid drifting blissfully Did you finish your homework Amanda did you tidy your room Amanda I thought I told you to clean your shoes Amanda I am an orphan roaming the street I pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet the silence is golden the freedom is sweet
Don't eat that chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne, Amanda. Will you please look at me when I am speaking to you, Amanda? I am Rapunzel. I have not a care. Life in a tower is tranquil and rare. I will certainly never let down my bright hair. Stop that sulking at once, Amanda. You are always so moody, Amanda. Anyone would think that I nagged at you, Amanda. So this is the poem by Robin, Robin Klein. And now let us look at the structure of the poem a bit. Let's talk about the parts. There are two distinct parts of the poem. Now part one, as you see, deals with the directions that Amanda receives. And part two, if you look at stanza one, Amanda's daily life, don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Stop that slouching. And part two is Amanda's imaginative world. Now here, she is imagining that she is a mermaid and she is very blissfully just passing her time in the sea. The sea is languid. Languid means calm, quiet, very peaceful. So in a peaceful sea, which is green in color, sea green in color, she is the only one who is there. So basically, she wants freedom. So Amanda, the minute her mother or uh, the person who is giving her instructions tells her to do something, she immediately goes to her imaginative world. Now in part one, if you look at part one, sorry, if you look at part one, Amanda receives a series of commands. Don't bite nails, sit up straight, finish your homework. Now these commands symbolize societal expectations and the pressures that you all must be feeling in your daily lives. We all have certain expectations from us, right? And the tone in which these instructions are given or these commands are given, they are directive and they also reflect the expectations that have been imposed on Amanda, just like you must have also felt. In the part two, where she is in her imaginative world, like if you look at the second or the third stanza, uh, the first part here also is commands, don't eat chocolate, remember your acne, will you look at me, I am speaking to you. Whereas immediately Amanda goes to her imaginative world where she wants to be Rapunzel. Do you remember Rapunzel? It's a fairy tale you must have heard multiple times yes. in your childhood. Yeah. Right? And Rapunzel was actually trapped in a tower, uh, in a long tower and she could not escape from that tower. She was trapped by a witch in that tower. Uh, and in the story, she mm -hmm. was rescued by a prince. She had very long hair. Yeah. But here, Amanda says, I don't want any prince also. I just want to be in that tower. Would you like to be trapped in a tower? No, I I don't imagine myself uh, to be in a tower alone without my parents. Okay, but so um, uh, she thinks that if she is in a tower and all alone, she would have a peaceful life. But like you rightly said, I also feel that being Rapunzel would be uh, very difficult for me. Yeah. Right. So in the second part, Amanda becomes a mermaid. She also imagines herself as an orphan child without her parents, right? Yeah. She wants to experience complete freedom in those roles. Whereas these imaginative scenarios, they are a stark contrast to the demands of her real life. And what are her demands of the real life? They're very simple demands. Yes. Clean your room, tidy your shoes, uh, do your homework, don't eat chocolate because they're causing pimples, acne. So these are very simple demands. But Amanda still feels that it will be better if she is all alone and is like Rapunzel or an orphan child. Now, uh, this picture sort of shows what Amanda is feeling, though her mother might be talking to her at the time. Now, every poem becomes beautiful with the use of poetic devices. Right now, what are these poetic devices? They enhance the meaning of the poem. The words and phrases are uh, strung together in a way that they enhance the meaning of the poem. The first poetic device that the poet uses is imagery. So vivid images like languid emerald sea, you know, you can immediately picture a quiet, peaceful, calm sea and then soft dust with hushed bare feet. Now this is also like 
very simple footprints on a very fine sand very soft very fine sand they also evoke sensory experience you can actually feel these things you can picture them you can imagine them you can visualize them so the poet uses imagery to take you to that uh, level of emotion which amanda wants to feel yes. the second device that the poet uses is metaphor now the metaphor is where she compares silence as golden you know golden silence freedom is sweet uh, freedom is compared to a very sweet experience complete freedom is very sweet the poet also uses allusion now allusion is implied or indirect reference to a person event or thing or to a part of another text so all the roles that amanda thinks about a mermaid a rapunzel they metaphorically represent different facets of her desires for escapism and they also allude to other stories you know there are reference to a fairy tale both mermaid and rapunzel are references to fairy tales that we may have heard of in our childhood yes along with that the other poetic devices that the poet uses is anaphora it's a mm. it's a literary device which shows the start of two or more lines of a stanza as a same word or words so there are the words did did you finish did you tidy they also create a very poetic effect don't bite don't hunch the next poetic device that robin klein has used is alliteration alliteration as we all know are words beginning with the same sound the same alphabet stop that slouching and sit up straight sir 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 so s in all the words in this line there are other examples also children in the poem if you go through the poem you will be able to find lot of examples of alliteration then uh, apart from alliteration there is the there is obviously a rhyme scheme as you rightly said that poems give us a very rhythmic experience yes. the rhyme scheme of the poem adds to its musicality so the rhyme scheme of this poem is a a b a the first stanza hmm. and a a a the second half the image the follow follow up stanza right now uh, let us check your comprehension all right okay okay children tell me what specific commands is amanda given in her daily life uh, a pa- command by parents to do uh, the w- household work or do the study works you are absolutely correct she is also given certain uh, commands to uh, not bite her nails not yeah. hunch her shoulders to not slouch to sit up straight you know and also to mani- manage her own hygiene like keep not not biting the nails also tidying up her room as well as uh, cleaning her shoes so these are a few things that are expected from amanda then how do these commands reveal societal expectations how do how, what do you think how does they convey societal expectations and pressures um maybe in a student life uh, everyone feels the same like amanda okay uh, you give the better answer to it <laughs> so okay these commands basically represent societal norms regarding personal habits okay posture and responsibilities so the poem sort of conveys that amanda is in a age where the parents want her to be responsible yes. want her to recognize uh, the value and importance of discipline also they reflect the pressure every individual faces to conform to certain societal standards and i'm sure children you all are also expected to do the same your parents also expect you to follow certain rules in the household follow certain things and lead a disciplined life right right okay the next question in one word how would you describe the tone in part 1 okay it's a a, a. B- no no the tone what kind of tone does the poet use uh, like a commanding tone yes absolutely you are right it's a very authoritative a very uh, it's almost a directive as amanda is given a series of instructions yeah. and commands that she has to has to follow right the hmm. tone is how we give i can ask you to get me a glass of water and i can also tell you get me a glass of water yeah there is so, a big difference there is a big difference in my tone and tone determines how we interact with a person it's it's very very important to control and manage your tone when you're communicating with someone it's a very important part of your communication especially interpersonal communication right let us look at a couple of other questions 
Uh, how old do you think is Amanda and how do we know that? Okay, I guess uh, her age is around 14, 15 because okay. you mentioned that pimples on her face and um, the age she like to eat chocolate and don't like to do household works. <laughs> you are absolutely correct. Uh, so, it seems that the poet has imagined Amanda to be a 13, 14 year old. Uh, child uh, who is in her early adolescent years. Yes. I am sure most of you children, you are also in early adolescence and uh, you can relate with what Amanda is experiencing because uh, uh, Amanda is also being asked and directed to behave in a certain way and I am sure your parents, your teachers also ask you to behave in a particular way, manage your personal habits etc. And uh, there is a series of instructions right, cleaning your room, cleaning your shoes uh, along with not eating chocolate because it causes acne and pimples and in this age early adolescence most of us have struggled with the problem of acne and uh, pimples. Yes. So, I am sure you all can relate to it. So, this is we can safely assume this is why uh, she seems to be a 13, 14 year old girl. Like the students from class 10. Absolutely students from class 9th and 10th. Yes. Right. The next question is what do you think Amanda wants? And what does it tell about her? I think Amanda wa want an independent life, like 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 a bird to fly in a, the sky without any uh, without any restrictions. Right. So you you are absolutely right. Amanda wants complete freedom. Yes. She doesn't want to conform to any standards of society, and uh, she it sort of also tells her, it sort of tells her that uh, you know it tells us that she is one of those people who do not like to be told uh, what is to be done and what is not to be done. So, there are a couple of other questions that we shall quickly go through. Who is the person talking to Amanda? Who do you think is the person talking to Amanda? I think her mother. Absolutely. Yes, her mother. It seems like her mother. It could be her father also or a hmm. grandparent also. We do not know exactly from the tone that it is her mother only. It could be any elder in the family. Yes. Uh, Okay, so a uh, couple of other questions that you can do by yourselves are what emotions are associated with Amanda's imaginative world? How do these imaginative scenarios provide a contrast to Amanda's real life? We have already discussed these questions through the poem and to sum up, uh, Robin Klein's poem Amanda explores Amanda's life with a unique structure. In the first part, commands like don't bite reflect discipline and commands that children of your age have to listen to, have to follow and contrasting this is the second part where Amanda imagines to being a mermaid and Rapunzel seeking freedom. Now the poem's themes, remember children, the theme of the poem revolves around balancing societal expectations of discipline with personal desires. It captures the struggle of an adolescent which are which is exactly your age, you want complete freedom whereas parents expect you to lead a completely disciplined life. The ideal thing to do is to find a balance between the need for discipline and the desire for autonomy. I am sure when you read this poem, this explanation will help you a lot. Thank you so much everyone. I hope uh, you will you have enjoyed this session. Yeah, thank you so much ma'am and uh, I guess uh, and I am sure that all students are very, uh, uh, very uh, Mm, strong to give the all answers by herself by themselves and now time to wrap up the show and uh, a piece of information that is very important to share with you regarding the textbook from the session 2023 to 2024. If you are still not to uh, order your book you can order your books from the sales counter that, that is in New Delhi, Ahmedabad, Kolkata, Bangalore and Guwahati and the all uh, information is also on your display screen or uh, and you can download the soft copy of this uh, textbooks from the Diksha, NCRT and uh, from the mobile app and now time to say goodbye, take care, Namaskar.